Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. My partner John Coleman and I are with a very special guest today, Michelle Fabrica. Yes? That's yes. Good. Michelle, how are you? Good. Great to be here. Thank you for in 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 inviting me. Oh, we're, it's our pleasure. Um, you know, you are, I, I have to tell the people at home, you are a seasoned love and relationship coach, which is why we invited you on, um, as well as a certified mediator. And um, of course, you can't go through life without love and relationships. So uh, we think you've got a lot of good information for um, uh, people that are watching Celebrating Act Two. Um, one of the things that I found fascinating was that your background uh, was in uh, mathematics from the University of Michigan, and you you were a software engineer. So, so how how does one go from being a software engineer to a a coach for love and relationships? That's uh, that's got to be a great story. Yeah, well, it is. Um... Where to begin? So really, that was my first career out of college, obviously, and um, it wasn't really my passion. So it ended up, you know, I ended up getting married and I was um, had children. I was home with my kids and some different experiences I had um, as a volunteer during that time. But what really uh, brought me to coaching and especially love and relationship coaching is my own challenges around relationships. So I, took, I felt like it took me a long time to find a satisfying relationship and in my marriage things were going pretty well but you know it got really challenging and so I realized that I was part of the problem in a lot of our interactions and it was through a lot of personal growth work some therapy different things and I found that wow like I had, can make a huge impact in the way I'm showing up here and how I'm speaking to my partner and so anyway we ended up did getting divorced but I just I love there's so much knowledge that I have now and experience that I didn't have before. And I think a lot of us just get what we get when we're growing up. We see the relationships around us and we don't always know um, how to make it better. That, you know, that's true. And not only do we know, not necessarily know how to make it better, we kind of assume that what we see is the way it should be. So I think that's the basis why, you know, uh, abusers people who have been abused abuse end up abusing people who have you know been from a broken home often you know don't have great relationships on their own and end up breaking up their marriage so you're absolutely right it's a uh, unfortunately parenting isn't you know really re really regulated we we all do the best we can right and we end up growing up as best we can, and sometimes our kids uh, don't benefit. Uh, sometimes they get the wrong messages and stuff. I'm glad. I'm glad you um, you solved your problems and your marriage. You you uh, you got divorced, but you're happily divorced. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's see. I was married. I was with my um, former husband for about 18 years, and we separated in 2011. And um, so what's that been? Nine years. And yeah, so he's actually now happily remarried and I'm happily repartnered and we've been co-parenting our children together. And it's, it's really beautiful. Actually, we took our freshman daughter off to college and last fall and all four of us, you know, Dave and I, my partner, Dave and I, my former husband, and his wife, and it was just really joyful actually to be there together. That's, that's really great when, uh, when we can learn from our mistakes and we can move forward and, uh, and find happiness, even because after all, everybody's life has ups and downs. Uh, well, some me, uh, are more painful than others, but it's Michelle, great me, to be able to move forward. Michelle, if I could, let me ask you this. Uh, so you've been uh, a relationship coach for uh, like close to uh, a decade uh, now. Uh, have have you, is it keeping you very busy? Uh, what are the kind of things that you did, A, to prepare for that, it's a, a transition, and uh, what are the kind of thing, the kind of uh, situations that you get involved in? 
Yeah. Yeah. So, um, like I said, a lot of it was my own personal growth work around, you know, I was in therapy for a long time. My former husband and I were in couples counseling together for two years, really to try to really do our due diligence, see if we could, um, you know, keep our relationship together. We had two children together. It's really important to, I think to, to take the time for that. So I'm glad we invested in that. And so it was a learning through like basically as a client, but also as wow, observing how this person was helping us. And I ended up doing a couple different coach trainings. One in particular was with um, Dr. Susan Campbell. She's a, a psychotherapist and uh, she has her own coaching called Getting Real Coaching, which is really about authenticity and communication, clear communication, and really, you know, knowing self-honesty and different ways that we show up as just more ourselves rather than how we should be or how we think we should be, which doesn't really lead to a sustainable relationship. So would it be uh, fair to say that it's not the ultimate goal of your work to keep people together, but, but, but perhaps to have people understand the relationship that they're in, and that sometimes it's not solvable and perhaps you should be apart, and then a better way to navigate that, uh, especially if you have kids. So it, would it be fair to say that the primary goal is not to keep people together, but for them to explore and understand what their differences are and whether or not they're uh, uh, able to reconcile them. Yes, I would say that. I mean, I certainly don't, I see myself as like an ally or a guide for them. So I don't like have some opinion about, oh, this relationship can be, you know, can be improved or it can't. And it's more like I'm, I'm kind of in curiosity with them and help them discover what is going on between them. What do they each want? What have they, what parts of them have they, sort of kept hidden or not expressed? How are they interacting with each other that just kind of like, um, you know, kills the intimacy and connection? So it's really about, um, let's like kind of huddle in here together and look at what is, what's actually going on. And I think it's, sometimes we don't actually have somebody that's really there with us, almost like in a peer way, but like uh, supporting the individuals as well as the couple and see where they can go from here. Yeah. You know, I, I love the word coach, by the way, um, because I when I hear the word coach, a life coach or a love coach or anything like that, I think of a athletic coach mm. and athletic coaches don't they don't really tell the player do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. They give the player tools. They say they they help them build up their muscles. They practice. They give them techniques. And then they say, now go out and put it to use. You know, that's what a an athletic coach does. And I think that's what a life coach does too. I, and I think I when when I heard you talking, I was thinking to myself, happiness. It's really we all just want to be happy. And you know, sometimes we're we're the source we're the source of our own problems and sometimes it's not. But the point is we're all looking for happiness and you you guide people to happiness. Yeah. I mean, I think I love what you said about coaching because it is when you said about the tools, like we give people the tool or coaches give people the tools. That's what I do. But sometimes the tools don't work. And then we look at, well, why? Why didn't why weren't you able to make these changes? And then we dig deeper than that. It's not like blaming anybody. Oh, you didn't do the things I said. It's like I'm, I give them suggestions or invitations to try some of these new sort of experiments in the way they relate to each other. And often that brings about some discovery, like, wow, I, you know, cause I think when you talked about, you know, you looked at my background, I made some cha big changes, you know, software engineer to love and relationship coach. It's like, we have to follow these sort of sparks or aliveness or things along the way. And I think as a couple, we have the idea that we have to kind of like, oh, this isn't going to fit in this relate. Like there's a box that we kind of put each other in and we put ourselves in. And I think it's important to just, um, you know, the relationship can still with staying changed because, you know, diversity and, and difference are things to be honored. And yet, how do we work with each other as life throws us curveballs? Yeah. Well, I have, you... I, have to, I have to say that um, uh, uh, while uh, today is to get to meet Michelle and have our audience to meet you as well, um, uh, I hope that we'll have opportunities to discuss uh, specific issues that you deal with with people so that uh, our audience, A, may be able to identify with that or say, you know what, uh, I like the 
way Michelle approaches things, maybe I can find her and, and we'll put up a, an address that people can find your website. But uh, honestly, the thing I'm looking forward to is that John and I have known each other for about uh, 10 or 12 years. And uh, for the last three or four or five years, we've partnered on a, a number of things. And we're sort of still in the puppy love uh, stage. <laughs> we've won over one Business another. Partner, we hold love, hands yeah. in pu- Well, we don't uh, because his wife and my wife probably wouldn't appreciate that and also we live about 50 miles apart but um uh you know we're just in that blissful stage of our relationship and we may although it's hard to me to imagine that um i could see how he might annoy me from time to time but for, for him he's just like in a remarkable relationship with me so perhaps if we ever run a little foul of one another you can st- step in just like you are right now right in the middle and, Tell uh, me, Coach, what should I do? What should I do? <laughs> should I slap yeah. Mark across the head? Yes. Okay. We'll oh, yeah. That. You see that, Mark? It didn't hurt that much. And you loved that, didn't you? It was, a, it was like a, a love tap. I just happened hey, to use a bat. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Michelle, uh, we've been talking about couples, but you don't just uh, coach couples. You, Your clients include single people or maybe people who the other half of the couple doesn't want to show up. I, 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 am I correct about that? Yes, that's right. Yeah. So some of my clients are have been single, some are in a relationship and usually it's sort of one person who wants something to be different. I mean, that's why people come to coaching. It's like, I want a different situation. I want a different outcome. I want a different, I want harmony I want, that we don't have, or, you know, I want more time to get whatever it is. And so they want change. And so often it's one person who's more motivated to do that. And that can work really well because, you know, one person can make a difference in how they show up in the relationship. It's kind of like when you're doing a dance with someone, if you start doing a different dance, they respond differently. And it really, it doesn't, it doesn't mean like, oh, well, why do I have to do all the work? It's like, you get to make changes for yourself. And some of the changes are often like, well, what are you doing for yourself to feel joyful and happy? You know, maybe you're in a a job you don't really like anymore and you come home in a bad mood and you're grumpy and it's sort of like, well, wow, I need to look in the mirror and see what I can do to make some changes for myself. So yeah. I, I love that too, because it, it doesn't mean like, I know you said that, oh, the other person won't come. It's like, well, it's okay. Sometimes that can work really well. Um, in terms of single people, people who are not in a relationship, do you have a lot of uh, people who come and are looking for love and looking for a relationship and can't find it. I, I know uh, a few single people uh, over 50 that, you know, they're, they're trying to date and they're just not, they're just not enjoying it. They're not having a good time of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I definitely, I mean, I thought when I left, you know, ended my marriage and, you know, I was in my forties and, you know, two daughters, it's just like, what are the, wow, how am I going to meet anybody? You know, it was definitely like, how is this going to work? And um, there's a, there are a lot of people who are single in midlife and beyond and people who want to connect. And, you know, now there's online dating and different ways to meet people. But I also like to especially encourage people to meet in person, like find activities they love doing and get out there and enjoy themselves. And it can be kind of a um, like an ex- like a time of experimentation, like learning about wow, who am I now? Like what's what's really important to me now? Not like, oh, I want to get married and have kids or I want to have this certain job and lifestyle. Like maybe those are still important, but there are other issues that have come up along the way. And so it's good to get to know ourselves again at this age and stage. And then, wow, what do we want? Maybe we just want to casually date for a while and that's cool. Or maybe we do want to find a life partner. It doesn't have to be some certain like, you know, often, you know, happily ever after sunset thing. I mean, maybe it is, you know, you never know, but it's sort of like there's love and connection to be had in different ways and friendship and. Sure. And, and life is a journey. I mean, we, we go through changes, uh, naturally life is changing around us. We change, uh, sometimes in reaction to that. Sometimes, uh, uh, we just change cause we we get bored and we want to try something different. Um, and I, I can imagine that, uh, particularly as you get to over 50, what Celebrating Act 2 calls the second half of your life, the rest of your life, um, you you find that things are quite different at 50 and certainly at 60 and at 70. Um, and so we respond differently. And so we need to make changes. We need to be able, and sometimes it's good to have a, a help from a coach. Yeah, I think um, often it's, it's good to tune in and, we have, if we 
have been listening to other people too much or our community, our friends, maybe our kids, like you can't be dating, you know, mom just passed away. You can't go out and date, you know, whatever, different things around what's okay to do, what's not. I, I like to think like each person has to make their own individual decision around these kinds of things. I mean, I knew somebody who started dating three weeks after his wife passed away and they were together a really long time. And it's, so it's like, there's no right or wrong here. And how do you, um, you know, can we be open to loving again and being close and feeling that joyful, you know, blissful delight in just another human being? That's uh, great. I, I have well, a question for you. Uh, I, um, in addition to the relationship of a couple, uh, and you've just now alluded to the fact that uh, maybe uh, somebody is a widow or widower, and that's a different kind of thing, but there's also a relationship with, let's say, grown children or even children who are growing up and you or your spouse or soon-to-be or ex-spouse also is going to be in a relationship and how does that all get handled? And you see so many things about, you know, like the Brad Pitt and uh, Angelina uh, have these uh, massive fights over who gets to see the kids one and one accusing one of the other things. So I'm sure that a coach, uh, proper coaching, might have been able to help smooth even the worst of those situations over. But it's not just the, the two principal parties. Yeah, right, because there are other people are deeply affected, obviously, children really affected by that. And I think that was one of the things that really helped me through my divorce and moving on is this, like, I want this to be a great experience, the best it can be for my children. And so, like, putting their needs first, that's one of the things I, you know, I've worked with some people around co-parenting, and it's really about what do they want for their children, and we just stay in that intention. And then we look at how we're going to be with each other, you know, as we, you know, hand the child from, you know, oh, I'll pick them up and this and that. And like to not obviously speak ill of their former spouse, because it's like people are, these kids are listening and it's really important to honor this person who, you know, maybe you don't want to be with them now, but you did, you loved, you know, you were together for a reason. And I love that kind of, I feel like I have this honor from, and just respect for my former husband and, you know, I want, I want my kids to have a great relationship with him. And, and sometimes, frankly, it was helping my kids talk to him in a way like, you know, you might want to, you want some ideas, you know, asking them, do they want some coaching from me to help them, you know, talk to their dad about something that's bothering them? Because I'm not the person anymore to intervene there. It's like, I need to help them advocate for themselves. And that can happen in different situations. Well, Michelle, this has been fascinating. Um, really enjoyed speaking to you and getting to know you better. Thank you. Yeah, it's great to be here with you both. And um, this is fun. Love hanging out with you guys. You know, uh, Michelle, the, the subject of love and relationships is huge. So I know we're going to be meeting again and maybe talking about some more specific uh, things that you can help people with uh, on Celebrating Act Two. But in the meantime, I know art wants everybody to know how to get in touch with you. Um, MichelleFabrica.com, is that correct? That's right. That's your website. And of course, you're on LinkedIn. And when you go to LinkedIn, I think you, we have to look for the Michelle Fabrica that is the love and relationship coach, because there might be two or three Michelle Fabricas there. So thank you, Michelle. Appreciate thank it. You. We're looking forward to seeing you again. Yeah, thank you. This is great. For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.